So we just showed that the complex quaternion split into two pieces. Left and right-handed vial spinners. So the left-handed spinner transforms like this. And the right-handed spinner transforms like this. So one thing to notice here is that we're not talking about a matrix acting on a column vector. Instead, this is always just an algebra acting on itself. So this is just the complex quaternions acting on the complex quaternions. So from here, it's really easy to write down Dirac spinners. It's just going to be the sum of these two things. And a Majorana spinner is also easy to define. It's given by a Dirac spinner, plus or minus its complex conjugate. But it turns out that we can model more than just spinners using the complex quaternions. We can also model four vectors. So this time, the complex quaternions split in a different way, and we get two four vectors. So a contravariant four vector transforms like this. And its covariant counterpart is simply given by the complex conjugate of this. So this is something that might actually look familiar to you. We often write down four vectors in terms of two by two matrices. Now finally, we can do this one last time. We can split the complex quaternions into two pieces. And this time, we're going to get a spinner, a scalar, and a field string tensor. So the scalar transforms like this. But the scalar happens to be just a complex number. So it commutes with everything, and it comes out. Now this L and L tilde happen to be inverses of each other, so they cancel. And this is, in fact, a scalar. Now finally, the field string tensor transforms like this. So just to summarize, using just the algebra of the complex quaternions, we're able to describe left and right-handed vial spinners, Dirac spinners, Majorana spinners, contravariant and covariant four vectors, scalars, and the field string tensor. Put all together, what is this? This is all of the Lorentz representations of the standard model.